So hello there and welcome. Now, today let's look at sulfur and its compounds and let's begin from defining what is sulfur. So you see that sulfur occurs in group 6 and period 3 of the periodic table. So sulfur has atomic number of 16. So by using the atomic number, it can be very easy for us to know the group and the period by which sulfur belongs. So you see that sulfur has atomic number of 16. So let's write the electronic configuration of sulfur. And for the electronic configuration, we'll be able to, to know or determine the group and the period by which sulfur belongs. So you see that sulfur belongs in uh, period number 16. So the configuration of sulfur is 2, 8, 6. So by looking at the configuration, which is 2, 8, 6, it will be easy for us to be able to know the group and the period. So let's, uh, let's see. It has three energy levels. Uh, three energy levels, which is two, the next one is eight, the next one is six. So apart from that, the last value or the last digit, we see that it is a six. So since it has three energy levels, that is one, two, and three, and then, uh, yeah, since it has three energy levels, it will mean that it is in period number three because of the three energy levels. The last value, as you can see in the configuration, the last value is a six. So this automatically means that it is in group number six so remember three energy levels it will mean that it is in period number three then the last value is six it will mean that it is in group number six so this means that sulfur is in group number six and in period three as you can look at the periodic table that's the position of sulfur whereby you'll notice that it is in period three and group number six of the periodic table so you see that this element sulfur mainly occurs in uh, in different areas whereby the main areas that sulfur may, be, uh, may occur deposited, we have Texas and Louisiana in the United States of America. We have Sicily in Italy, and then we also have in Japan a city called Kanagawa. So it can be found in Louisiana, Tex uh, Louisiana and Texas in the US. It can also be found in a city called Sicily in Italy, and it can also be found in Japan in a city called Kanagawa. So apart from that, let's look at now the occurrences of sulfur. So how does sulfur occur in the environment? So you see that sulfur mainly is mainly found or it's mainly abundant in areas whereby vo volcanic activity is present or volcanic activity is active. So you see that sulfur can be able to occur in, in a free element state or in combined state. So the first instance by which sulfur can be able to be found in the environment, it can be found in free state or in combined states, like for example, it can be found in hydrogen sulfide. Notice that there is a sulfur in the compound, so as hydrogen sulfide, as zinc blender, which is Zn and S, it can be found in iron pyrites, copper pyrites, gypsum, etc. So sulfur, remember, it can be found in combined state and it can also be found as a free element in the environment. Speaking of free element, let's now look at extraction of sulfur by using the main method, which is called the frust process. So the frust process mainly takes advantage of separating sulfur as a free element. So that's why you use frust process. So for the first process, we see that we have different pipes of different diameters, whereby we have pipes, uh, a pipe of 2 centimeters, we have another pipe of 8 centimeters, we have another pipe of 15 centimeters. So in the first process, remember, only three pipes are used to extract the sulfur. We have the outermost pipe, which mainly pumps superheated water. We have uh, the innermost pipe, which pumps uh, air. And then we have the middle pipe, whereby the function of middle pipe is just now to push the contents or the froth of sulfur from the underground up to the surface, whereby extraction process will take place. So you see that in the first process, three pipes of different diameters, that is 2 centimeters, 8 centimeters, and 15 centimeters, are drilled within the sulfur deposits underground. Just as how uh, the water drills function, they drill those pipes inside the, the water table underground. That's exactly how sulfur extraction of rust process takes place. So the three different pipes will be drilled underground inside the sulfur deposits. So this process mainly takes advantage of the melting point of sulfur, which mainly ranges between 113 to 120 degrees Celsius. So the melting point of sulfur ranges between 113 to 120 degrees Celsius. And you can see this is the diagram of the frust process. Take note that we have the three different pipes which are sunk 
inside of the sulfur deposits. So for the outermost pipe, we see that superheated water at 170 degrees Celsius and 10 atmospheres is forced down into the sulfur deposits which are found underground. That's the function of the outermost pipe. So that's the first function of the outermost pipe. So superheated water at 170 degrees Celsius and 10 atmospheres, that is very high pressure. And 10 atmospheres is forced down into the sulfur deposits which are found underground. So the high pressure ensures that water remains in liquid state. Because normally we know that water, pure water that is, it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So what is boiling point? So boiling point is a point where liquid changes to gas. Pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So at 100 degrees Celsius, we expect that water is going to change from liquid and be a gas. But now you see, this is superheated water at 170 degrees Celsius. So the high pressure which comes along the superheated water, the high pressure ensures that water remains in liquid state. That's the function of the high pressure. So the other function of now this superheated water is now to melt the sulfur which is found underground. That's the function of the superheated water. So apart from the outermost pipe, let's now go to the innermost pipe whereby for the innermost pipe we see that 15 atmospheres of hot air is forced down into the sulfur deposit. So uh, the first side we have superheated water being forced down to melt the sulfur. In the innermost pipe, we have 15 atmospheres of hot air which is being forced down into the sulfur deposit. So this mainly produces a froth which is a mixture of sulfur and water. That's the function of the innermost pipe. Hot air to be pumped uh, on the sulfur deposit in order to produce froth which is a mixture of sulfur and water. So the other function of this, uh, of this hot air will be now to force the air uh, uh, through the middle pipe and onto the surface. So the innermost pipe, remember, it produces froth which is a mixture of sulfur and water and also to force, to force the sulfur froth from underground through the middle pipe and onto the surface whereby collection will take place. So apart from that, let's, uh, let's now look at the middle pipe. So what's the function of the middle pipe? So the middle pipe, we see that the high pressure from the innermost pipe forces the mixture through the middle pipe and onto the surface whereby collection process of the sulfur will take place. So remember this sulfur which is being extracted from the, uh, from the underground to the surface through the middle pipe uh, contains some traces of water because water melted the sulfur and sulfur is not soluble in water. So what happened is that this mixture which has come to the surface is a mixture of sulfur together with, uh, together with water. So you see that the collected mixture is then stored in large tanks. And then after this, the collected sulfur will then solidify at 115 degrees Celsius and thus separate from the water. Yeah, and thus it will separate from, uh, from the water that, from the water that, uh, that iliquanayo, uh, that was mixed with the sulfur. So remember, sulfur does not dissolve, does not dissolve in water. So sulfur is going to solidify at around 115 degrees Celsius. So if it will solidify at 215 degrees Celsius, decantation method can be used to remove the excess water from the sulfur. Because we see that decantation is the process of separating an insoluble solid from a solvent or an insoluble solid from a liquid mixture. So decantation process can be used now to, uh, to remove the traces of water from the sulfur. So that is all about the first process. So if you have been asked about the first process, that is all about the first, pro first process, which mainly use, uh, takes advantage of the boiling point of sulfur to extract the sulfur. So for this process of extracting sulfur, we see that the process is not, it's not that way straightforward. It's not that simple. Why is it not that simple? It's because there are some traces of impurities which are found underground, uh, sulfur embedded to these impurities. So sulfur is not uh, just pure sulfur which is found underground. So it is sulfur which has different impurities in it. So for example, an example of the impurities, we have the sand and we have the small pebbles of rocks. So these small pebbles of rocks can, can be able to hinder the extraction or the clear extraction of sulfur from underground. So if you have been asked in an exam, why is it that sulfur extraction using first process is not an easier task. So the obvious reason will be that 
sulfur is found embedded together with uh, different impurities which prevent the smooth extraction of sulfur from the frost process. So in summary, let's look at the different pipes that we have. So beginning with the outermost pipe. So for the outermost pipe, we see that it has the widest diameter. So the outermost pipe is the one which has the, uh, the widest diameter. And then we see that it delivers superheated water from the surface and onto the sulfur deposits which are found underground. So the middle pipe, we see that the function of the middle pipe is just to deliver the superheated sulfur from underground and onto the surface whereby extraction process is going to take place. So now let's look at the innermost pipe. So the innermost pipe has the smallest diameter. And then apart from smallest diameter, we see that air having about 15 atmospheres is pumped down this, uh, this pipe and onto the sulfur deposit. So this air produces a froth and then this froth will be a froth uh, which contains a mixture of sulfur and water. So also this inner pipe, the superheated air uh, forces the sulfur or the froth, it forces the froth from the underground and through the middle pipe and onto the surface whereby sulfur will now be extracted or sulfur will now be stored in large tanks awaiting for decantation process to take place as this will separate the sulfur from uh, the water uh, which is embedded to it.